Hi beautiful, look who is here. Pat's new love collection has arrived. I have all three of the palettes and I have two of the single liquid shadows to try in today's video. Of course, I am dying to dig in. We are going to swatch all of the palettes. I'm going to be creating a look with each one of these. I'll be trying both of the single shadows that I got and at the end we have to do some comparisons these shades versus the shades that come in the Mothership palettes back there. I cannot wait to get started, so let's jump right in. As per usual, all of the products I'll be talking about in today's video are listed and linked down below in the description box of my video, so if you decide to purchase anything, please check out my links down there. When you shop my links, you help my channel, and not only do I have these down there, but also everything I'm wearing on my face, so if you're curious about anything, everything is listed down in the description box. Okay, so I got all three palettes, like I said, and I'm going to show you the exterior packaging of them because, as you can see, um, they're all the exact same. So take a look right here. This is Pat McGrath's Valentine's Day collection, and I don't recall her ever doing a Valentine's Day collection this big. I feel like in past years, maybe we've gotten like a lipstick or like a lip combo or something like that, but I don't remember a whole collection, especially with multiple palettes and all of that. And I gotta say, me personally, I'm not mad about it because she did it differently. I feel like a lot of the Valentine's Day collections that I see are like just overly pink. It's pink everything, pink everywhere, and Mother Pat was like, no, I'm going to give you wearable romantic looks that you can actually wear on your date without it being pink all over your face, you know? I'm personally here for it. I like Mother's approach to Valentine's Day. Plus, she also released a brand new formula she's never had before, which is these right over here. Let me show you the exterior packaging. Take a look right there. These are the Fetish Eyes Longwear Liquid Eyeshadows. Each one of these palettes she came out with retail for $65 and the eyeshadows retail for $29 each. I ended up getting just the three palettes and the two eyeshadows. I did a Will I Buy a video on this collection where I said I was also interested in getting one of the lipsticks, but I ended up changing my mind after I saw the total, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I just got the three palettes and the two single shadows and that's what we're going to be digging into today So let me open up a palette. Oh my god, I'm taking so long. I know I'm going to start with the most romantic palette, which is the iconic infatuation one This one as you can see is the one with the more pink color story and it's not really pink pink It's like neutral romantic rose colors I would say and I'm dying to swatch it. So let's go ahead and go for the swatches before I show you the other one. Here is Candlelight Affair, which is a light champagne color. This one is Bare Venus. And then we have Platinum Divinity. As you can see, these are very pigmented and very, very buttery. I will say I do immediately notice a difference between the formulas in these palettes and the regular big Mothership palettes. And the difference to me is that even though these are pigmented right away and they glide very easily, um, I find them to be a bit more crumbly type of shadows, like they might give you a little bit more fallout maybe than the bigger Mothership palettes will. It's not a huge amount of fallout, especially in comparison to other brands, but like for Pat McGrath shadows, if you're comparing it to the formula that comes in the big Mothership palettes, these are a bit more softly pressed, I would say. So I think that you would have to be a bit more careful when it comes to fallout, but very impressed with these first swatches. As you can see though, these definitely still swatch beautifully and I'm sure that they're going to perform amazingly. So let's keep going with the swatches. The next three shades are Eternal Love. This is what I mean right here. See how like they can be a bit crumbly. Then we have Forever Adored. And then we have Endearment down here. And so these right here are the swatches of this first palette. Let's move on to the palette called Sublime Seduction, which is this one right here. And as you can see, this one has a much warmer color story. It's still kind of on the rose family, but a lot warmer than the first palette I showed you. Let's go ahead and go for the swatches. The first shade is Champagne Desire. Then we have Peach Persuasion. Beautiful. And then Bronze Fantasy, which is another shimmer. Second row, this one is Sable Seduction. 
Honey Luster, and then we have Burning Desire down here. So take a look right there. I did this with my left hand, so that's why they look crooked. <laughs> but these are the swatches of the second palettes. Very pigmented and very glidey, really nice formula just like the first. Last but certainly not least, as far as palettes are concerned, we have this one right here, which is called Velvet Liaison. And this is Pat's first Ulma palette. And I actually think I was definitely the most excited for this palette right here because even though it's an Ulma palette, which I get it, maybe some of you think it's boring, but I love Pat McGrath matte shades, first of all. Second of all, she gave us like a variety of different undertones within this matte color story, which I think will combine very beautifully with a lot of other shades in your collection. For example, if you happen to buy the Odin's Eye Single Shadow release, those single shadows have crazy shine and beautiful multi-chromatic color stories. So imagine combining the Odin's Eye single shadows with this matte palette here. The amount of stunning looks you can create combining that is going to be endless. So this is why this palette was so exciting to me. Plus every once in a while I do like to throw on an all matte eyeshadow look and it looks very, very beautiful and like I mean business, you know? So let's go ahead and go for the swatches of this one. The first shade is Beige Bliss, which I know is a kind of boring color because it's very skin-like, but this is important in an all matte palette because that's going to be the shade you end up putting on your eyelid to brighten things up. Um, so I'm glad that it's there. And then we have the shade Enamored down here. Plum Provocateur is the next one, which I love this type of cool tone colors. Then we have Midnight Mink, which is this stunning neutral brown, Barely Veiled, and Voluptuous Rose. Okay, I'm gonna fix these swatches a little bit. I didn't fix any of my previous swatches, but for some reason, these didn't come out as pretty, so I'm going to fix them to show you better. I was trying to not get fallout, so I feel like I wasn't picking off enough product. <laughs> All right, that's a little better. Take a look right there at the swatches of the All Matte Palette. Obsessed with the undertone of this shade. I love plum shades though, and this is a perfect transition color right here. Moving on to the single liquid shadows I bought. I got these two right over here, and this is the packaging, which is plastic, but very slick looking, I would say. So I got the colors Twilight Platinum, which is this darker pewtery one right here, and then I also got the color Divine Champagne, because it's a basic color and I felt like um, I would get use out of it. So let me show you the swatches of these. Here is Twilight Platinum. As you can see, very pigmented right away. And the color comes out pretty evenly all throughout. And it's a very opaque type of liquid shadow as well. There's not a lot of transparency through it. And then we have the Vine Champagne, which I'm gonna put right under it here. Another thing to note, and I might repeat this later because I already filmed with these yesterday, is that there's no special shade in them. There's no special extra glitter, glimmer, nothing like that. It's just like your basic shimmer. The formula is great, but just basic shimmer liquid shadow type of ordeal. Alrighty, time to start trying them and I'm going to start with Iconic Infatuation here. I just applied a bit of an eyeshadow primer and I'm going to start with the shade Bare Venus because from this palette, this is definitely our perfect transition shade. So with a rougher number 15 brush, I'm going to blend it all throughout the crease of my eye, back and forth, all the way to the inner corner and diffusing right back here on the outer part so that everything looks nice and smooth. And then once this shade is blended, I'm going to move on to the color Endearment down here using a refer number one brush. Uh, I hate when that happens. Okay, I'll fix that later. So Endearment, refer number one, and I'm going to tap it on the outer third of my eyelid back here and blend it into the crease. And so that is what those two colors are looking like so far. You can definitely leave it at that and that looks stunning. But I want to use as many of the shades as possible. So I am going to go into the darkest shade back here, which is called Eternal Love. And with this one, I'm going to darken things up even more. 
I'm gonna bring it in halfway and wing it out a bit but like in a smoky type of way <laughs> just like so so I think let's see I'm going to use with a refer number 26 I'm going to use the shade forever adored fleur ever adored and I'm going to put it right here in the center of my eyelid and I use this number 26 brush so I could keep that like angle that I created with the dark shade I don't know I figured I try something new today I guess like I said I want to try all the shades so platinum divinity next and I'm applying it with my refer number 28 right here on the inner part of the eyelid blending it into the previous shimmer shade so lastly candlelight affair same refer number 28 I really like the way this is coming out and we are going to do the inner corner of course and bring it in a bit all right, I'm going to darken up this thing here because I really liked it. So the darkest color on a refer number one. Again, I still want it to look smoky, but just a bit more defined, I guess. I want to define it further back here. I like it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab that same darkest matte shade with a refer number three, and I'm going to swipe it back and forth underneath the outer half of my under eye. And then back to our transition color with a refer number 13. I'm going to smoke out the whole under eye area and all the way to this outer part back here. Smoky, smoky. And just like that, we have our first look and I'm really digging the way it looks. I'm going to use a lip liner for my waterline because it just has the perfect color. Is it safe? I've done it before and nothing has happened, but I can't promise you that it is, so do with that what you will but i am going to be using the rare beauty lip liner in the shade humble in my waterline i just don't have any eyeliner that's a light rosy color um usually they just are like baby pink is the closest you can find and see how this matches the eye so good <laughs> i like it Okay, so before I get into mascara and all that, let's just go ahead and do look number two, which we are going to do with this palette here, Sublime Seduction. And of course, I'm going to start with the lightest shade to use as a transition. This one is called Peach Persuasion. And with my refer number 15 brush, I'm going to blend it back and forth all throughout the crease of my eye and diffuse the top edges so that it looks very nice and blown out back with my refer number one i'm going to get this color here which is called burning desire and i'm going to tap it on the outer corner of the eye once again and then once i have a nice amount of color back there we're going to start blending it so just with my refer number one brush i'm doing little circles and smoking things upwards I want to use all the shades, so we're going for this one as well. This one is called Sable Seduction, and once again, I am patting the color on first, and then I'm going to start blending the edges. This is a very nice neutral dark brown, so this is going to look really pretty and very smoky. I don't know what happened up here, but I'm going to go back with the refer number 15 and make sure that things look good i think i had a brush stroke that went too far <laughs> but i fixed it so just blend your mask back here okay i think that's good enough so i'm going to go into this shade here which is called bronze fantasy so i'm going to tap that bronzy shade right on the eyelid here and blend it into the matte shades on the outer corner by the way something that i noticed that i have to share with you is that even though the shades wear a little bit crumbly when swatching them I haven't gotten any fallout from these at all and it's not like I've been trying to like be super careful. Um, this little dark thing down here was because I like put the brush in the wrong place <laughs> earlier but like no actual fallout has come out which is great. So I'm going to go on to this shade next which is called Honey Luster. We know Pat loves her gold shades. So packing it right here on the center of the eyelid and then lastly champagne desire is going to go on the inner third of the eyelid and the inner corner packing it on and bringing it up a bit just like so i'm going to get the dark mattes brown on a refer number three and 
bring it under my eye here. And the peachy transition-y type shade on a refer number 13. And we are going to smoke it all out. For this eye, I used a brown eyeliner from ColourPop, and here is our final looks one and two. So now I am going to put on some mascara, and I'll be right back to show you what things look like, but here's the first look, no mascara. And here is look number two, no mascara. Back with mascara and lashes on, and these are my final looks with the first two palettes. So here's the final look with Iconic Infatuation, which... I'm really loving. And the final look with Sublime Seduction over here. Finally time to try the All Matte Palette, which is Velvet Liaison right over here. And as you can see, I already did the look over on this eye, so I'm going to recreate it for you here. And I gotta say, I do love Pat McGrath shimmer shades. Pat McGrath, in fact, has some of the most special shimmer shades on the market. I feel like we all know that, right? But there is something to be said about an all-map palette, and I am here for it. This looks serious and sexy and like, you mean business, you know? Like, this looks good. <laughs> so to begin, I'm going to use this shade down here as my transition shade, and with a refer number 15 brush, I'm going to blend it all throughout the crease of my eye. This is blending like butter and it is pigmented right away as you saw. I'm going to also grab this light shade here and go over the top edge because I did start with the light shade on the other eye and I completely forgot to start with the light shade this time. <laughs> so back to this one and I'm going to build up my crease ever so slightly. And I'm also going to add that shade to the outer corner of the eye here. Switching to my refer number one brush and I'm going to grab the lightest of the purpley shades here and I'm going to start building up the outer corner of my eye with it, just patting it all throughout. Is that what I did? Okay, I lied. That is not what I did on the other side, but now I have to blend it out. So if you were to want to use this shade, here's what it would look like. <laughs> But the shade I actually wanted to go for is the darker, more cool-toned one. So I'm just going to pat it on top and hope for the best. Patting it right on top back here. And then with the tip of my brush, I'm going to blend it. Then with a flat brush, my refer number 28, I'm going to grab the lightest shade. And I'm going to add it to my eyelid area. And we're going to define the eyelid with it a little bit and blend it down. Now I am going to intentionally go into this shade down here. And this, with a refer number three, is going to be the shade on my lower lash line. Just swiping back and forth down here. And then back to my transition shade with a refer number 26. We are going to smoke things out a little further right under the eye. I line my waterline with a brown eyeliner and I'm going to put some mascara on next. I'm back with my mascara on and this right here is my matte palette look. I absolutely love the way this one came out. The mattes in this Velvet Liaison palette are truly wonderful. They blend really easily. They are a bit more powdery than the mattes in like Pat McGrath's Mothership palette, I think, but I didn't have any major fallout. They still performed really well and I'm pretty happy with the final result. Now that I've tried all three palettes in the video, I definitely need to try these still. So let's go ahead and open them up. First, I'm going in with the shade Twilight Platinum. And I am a little nervous about this, but let's go for it. I'm going to just angle it up here so that I don't get it on my lashes. And I'm going to distribute it all throughout my eyelid. Okay, that's looking nice. Let's see. I think I'm going to help myself by getting a brush. So I'm going to pat it in place and then tap it into the end of the eye where the darker matte shades are. Okay, that's actually really pretty. Back with whatever's left on my refer number one brush, I'm going to tap the edges of the liquid shadow. And here is the look with Twilight Platinum. Before I give you my opinions on these, I'm going to use both of the shades that I got. So take a look right there. That's one of them applied. So now I'm going to try Divine Champagne over on this eye. 
This one looks really pretty as well. And I'm just going to spread it with the little doe foot applicator. And I grabbed a different synthetic brush and I'm going to tap it over just like so. Once again, blending this outer edge right here with my refer number one brush, nothing added, whatever was left in it. And so take a look right here at what this one looks like. Really, really pretty as well. Now, I'm slightly disappointed in the formula of these. And let me explain that further. Because I always love shimmers from Pat McGrath, I, in my mind, just expect everything to be like Astro Blitz shades. I expect everything to have that level of like, micro glittery pigments in there that are going to make your eyes shine from the moon, right? So even though this is an amazing formula as far as like performance, you guys saw like I had no issue applying these at all. They went on really nicely. I was able to blend them in very easily with a brush. I was able to diffuse the end so that they would blend into the previous color. The performance of them is perfect. The pigmentation of them is also perfect but the shine <laughs> it looks like a regular shimmer shadow type of shine maybe one that you wet like if you wet a shimmer shadow you might get this level of shimmery right here it doesn't have the fun micro glitters it doesn't have the dual chromes it doesn't have the multi-colored spectacle that i expect from pat mcgrath eyeshadows so are they bad absolutely not these are great they're awesome they're awesome. Very, very good quality. But I do have a very high shimmer standard from Mother Pat, and so I expected these to just be more, to be more sparkly, to be more duochrome-y. And they're kind of basic for a liquid shimmer shadow as far as the colors are concerned. Again, the formula is amazing, but as far as the colors are concerned, I wanted a little bit more fun in my Pat McGrath liquid shadows. <laughs> I'm back and I want to do a couple of comparisons. As far as like the individual shades in each palette are concerned, I feel like they're not uncommon shades to have. I feel like we can have shades like these in a lot of other palettes from Pat McGrath or other brands in our collection. So my main kind of point of interest as far as comparisons are concerned is whether or not these palettes are pretty much the exact same as another palette in the Pat McGrath collection. So for example, when I saw the palette Sublime Seduction, which is this one here with the warm shades that I'm wearing on this side of my face, the first palette I thought of from Pat McGrath was this one that came out recently, which is called the Golden One, because they both have gold shades in them and they both have warm tones in them. So let's take a look side by side at what these two palettes look like and I'm going to swatch them for you. All right, so here they are swatched side by side. The top palette is the palette from the Love Collection. The bottom palette is the golden one from the Star Wars Collection. And none of the colors are an exact dupe for one another. But as you can see, the color stories do have similar vibes to them. Personally, if you ask me to choose, I obviously love the price of the golden one better because it's like $35 or something like that versus $65. But... If price wasn't taken into consideration, I do like the formulas and also the color story of the Love one more because it has three mattes in it, which I really appreciate. I love a really good combination of mattes and shimmers. So this one has three shimmers, three mattes, and I think the formula is a little bit better. These can be a bit extra crumbly sometimes. But when it comes to the All Matte palette, I don't really have an exact dupe in mind because Pat McGrath does not have any other All Matte palettes in her collection. In fact, in majority of her Mothership palettes and her quads, she has very few mattes <laughs> in those palettes, which is another reason why this, I think, is appreciated on my part at least. But besides that, if you do have like a huge, huge Pat McGrath collection or eyeshadow palette collection in general, you will probably find dupes for these shades. But there's not like one palette that comes to mind that is going to be very similar to this one, especially from Pat McGrath. And then we have this one here, Iconic Infatuation, and of course a palette immediately does come to mind from Pat McGrath when you open up this one. And that is Mothership number 7 right here, especially because this one has those like soft, cool-toned, pinky shades that 
this one also has in it so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two okay so take a look once again the top palette is the new love collection palette the bottom palette is mothership number seven these are actually a bit more different than i thought the closest color is definitely the matte dark brown here but this is a shimmer versus a matte these are completely different undertones and i mean these are kind of similar to one another but you know, a lot of palettes have those shades in them. Overall, similar vibes once again, but I honestly thought they would be more similar to one another than they actually are. So here's the bottom line for me. These are my final thoughts on this whole collection. I feel like if we were to measure this collection, by any other brand's standards. This is an amazing collection and overall I really like the quality of everything. I really like the color stories of everything. I really appreciate having more mattes in my palettes or like an even amount of like mattes and shimmers if you know what I mean. And then it's nice that she also gave us an all matte palette which I actually really like and I'm very excited about because again I can combine those matte shades with a lot of other shimmers in my collection and I can create an infinite amount of beautiful looks with them. However, however, this is Pat McGrath we're talking about it, and I feel like we're used to Pat McGrath giving us the extra mile, if that makes sense. For the past years, she's been coming out with innovative formulas. We love her Astro Bliss shades that she puts in her palette. We love the shimmery shades that she gives us, the dual chromes that she gives us. I feel like she overall creates pretty interesting color stories, and I just don't think that these right here, these monochromatic um, color stories are interesting enough. I feel like these are the types of color stories that other brands give us and we're like happy with, but for Pat McGrath, I feel like it should be better. It should be more interesting. Maybe one of these shimmers should at least be a duochrome shade. Maybe she could include an Astro Blitz shade in one of these little palettes, which I know she's never done before, but like why not, you know? They are $65 after all, so why not give us that extra mile since we are paying $65 for six shades? And don't get me wrong, I feel like these don't necessarily need to be bought full price. These probably will at some point go on sale, but when you have these absolutely stunning palettes with much bigger pans, better color stories and astro blitz shades which yes these retail for 128 dollars usually but she's had really long sales where you can get them for 40 percent off so would you rather get this palette here for 7680 right because 40 percent off of this one is 7680 or would you rather get the six panner with the no special shades and the more basic color story for 65? It's a no-brainer for me. Obviously, I think the Mothership palettes are much better and I like these types of palettes better, but she only makes one of these a year. And so in the meantime, she's been filling them with palettes like this one. I'm not hating on this. I actually really like them. I feel like all of these palettes are perfect to be used on an everyday basis but I don't think anyone's like running to get these at full price. Since we've been able to get her much better palettes for extended periods of time for 40% off. I'm a little conflicted because you guys know Pat McGrath is one of my all-time favorite brands and I want her to continue to be extra and I want her to continue to give us more than we expect, you know? Yes, I feel like these are totally acceptable palettes. They are beautiful. The color stories are great. I created stunning looks with them that I really like and they are colors that I see myself reaching for all the time because these are the types of colors that I gravitate towards. But with that said, I just want Pat to give us more. <laughs> and by the way, why did she discontinue the quads? We had a good thing with the quads. The quads would sometimes have special shades. They had duochromes. They had shades that were extra glittery. She had Astro Blitz shades in the quads. I would rather pay $65 for one of those Astro Blitz shades quads than paying $65 for these. But that's just me, I know. So I would love to know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. By the way, these right here that she's charging $29 for would also have been a perfect opportunity to give us more, you know, to like really break boundaries and do something unexpected and like give us the shimmer and the duochrome and like all of that. And instead, 
I mean, they're good. Everything I tried today is good, but it's nothing extraordinary. And when it comes to Pat McGrath, and this might just be me, I want extraordinary. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. Those are kind of where my thoughts are at. I do not regret that I got this collection, of course, because I can make this video and tell you guys my thoughts on it and whatnot. But my thoughts are that you should wait for it to go on sale and buy it then rather than buy it full price because there's nothing extraordinary about it. If it was extraordinary, I might suggest you get it full price, but there's nothing extraordinary about it. And so therefore I would wait for the sale because we know it's coming, right? <laughs> Alright, so those are my thoughts on this collection. Overall, did I like it? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Do I see myself using it? Yes. Is it extraordinary? No. <laughs> don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.